Greetings. Well, it's just before the sun up. It's not as we hours as sometimes. But really what has come to me is the revelation about time. Remember, we talked about Barack Obama being in a spiritual sense in the, you know, the world order of things, which is, you know, the satanic order of things. And, and acknowledged the... Uh, Oh gosh, that grinder is uh, irritating. But uh, you're getting you're getting it. You're getting the high quality studio recording right at <laughs> the with my portable, which I finally got dialed in right. And uh, my second cup of. Okay. First of all, number numero uno. Like in Jeremiah twenty three nineteen, behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind, and it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. Jeremiah twenty three nineteen is a scripture that just came right to me. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until it have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. I shall not send these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they have prophesied. This is a message about the false prophets. And, you know, all the disinfo out there. You know, in other words, I have not told many of these people to speak, yet they've spoken. You know, they didn't keep their powder dry. They said, this is exactly this. That is exactly that. We're in tribulation. Time ends on this date. This is happening right now. The rapture is going to take place on this date. Um, And I'm not... People ask me if I'm a rapture guy. It's like, no, I don't need uh, a man-made theory for the Lord to uh, to understand meeting the Lord in the air, which um, is already happening as I speak. See, I don't expect people to even understand that statement, and they don't. How about this? The kingdom of God is within you. Not as an excuse, but ultimately, you know, I'm already in the air with the Lord. The kingdom of God is within me. In fact, eternity is within me. I'm blocked off from it, perhaps from a DNA thing. But uh, that will all be rectified in the end because the Lord is my God. Because I'm washed clean by the blood of Jesus, though I be a sinner. Circumstances have befallen me the last few years. Um, uh, I mean, from stemming from torture on the one hand to extreme blessing on the other, and it um, seems that both are in the extreme opposite. And I say, okay, it's all part of making me realize that I'm having an experience here on earth. And, but the Lord is in control of that experience. What he's asked me to go through, I've gone through. When I have a base... I had him. When I have abounded and been prosperous, I've had him. Uh, In all dealings between the two, he has been the only guidance that actually makes sense because so many of these ways lead to treacherous results. I've spoken about the world and the church system without repentance. Without repentance. I've not judged, but I've said what the Word of God says about the 501c3 and the rest of it, that it's a sham, and uh, many people know that already, but we want to go into the legal depths of it because people's lives are in danger. It has been spoken here to save those lives, not to condemn, but that they might, through Jesus, be saved because they would realize the position that they're in having an oath to the world, basically, and to Satan, and then saying that that's forgiven in Christ. When Jesus simply says, you know, I meant when you have me, the rest of it dies away. There is no double affiliation. Then people say, well, you put gas in your car, so you're a hypocrite. No, 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 no. What I mean is this. The rank and file of the world have an official contract. They have official rank and official file. 
they are in a certain position and they've taken their position and it has not changed though they said they have Jesus. And, you know, other people say, well, then you have to be like the Amish. That's real separations. No, the Lord separates us. John 17, people aren't reading it. When the Lord separates us, he leaves us in it, not of it. We put gas in the car. We go to a job. We do interact with the world. We do pay our taxes. We do, uh, you know, express ourselves. We do fall short. But because of his grace and his love and his power, we are saved. All he's asked me to do is not bow down to the enemy or not take the enemy in my spirit, to not allow the all-seeing eye to be resident within me, you know, to fulfill that genetic abomination that was done, to not go ahead and complete the process, which a lot of people say just accepting the world as is, growing up, whatever. It's like, no, that's not growing up. Growing up is when you realize it's all about the Lord and not you. That's growing up. You know, it's all about your ser- being, we're here to be of service. That's growing up. It's not about us or our vanity because in the end, we're not going to be here anyway. That's growing up. The idea of saying, well, he's the boss. If you want to get anywhere in life, you're going to have to step up, but you're still saved in Jesus. That's not growing up. That's denial. That's all I've said. I put that in a nutshell. We don't need to deal with that again today. I did not make the rules. This is not my opinion. This is a legal matter, and it has nothing to do with your opinion or my opinion. It just is what is written. It is what is said. It is the word of God. It is the truth. It doesn't matter what I think about it. It doesn't matter my opinion about what qualifies for the Lord or doesn't. It doesn't matter my opinion about what the scriptures say or don't say. My opinion doesn't matter. The truth in the end is all that matters. If there's a dividing amongst light and dark, then there will be a dividing among dark and light. Meaning, we judge here dark and light, light and dark. People go through to the other side, light to dark, dark to light, whatever. Feeling, and then, of course, the guilt sets in because, you know, you become a liar and a murderer at that point. And then, but it's covered in Jesus, so you're okay. That's the sad state of affairs in a nutshell. I didn't make that. That was here for thousands of years before I got here. My job was to make sure the people are not deluded about the legal facts of the case, of their case, so that they don't make a mistake. Um, How that manifests in a person's life, uh, mankind cannot get himself out of the slavery he's born into or accepts along the way, as a modality of existence, i.e., this puts me on a, on a career path. This puts me a, going through this initiation or getting that degree puts me on this path or that path. You know, um, whatever the logic is, there's a way that seems right to a man, but that way leads to death. And that's exactly what Proverbs is talking about. There's a path you can go on that will lead to, you know, people think security, safety, career path, job path and all that. And it's all dealing with slaves and masters and it's not based on freedom or truth. And uh, it's a sad tale of the world. People say you can't fight it, so give in to it, but I got Jesus, so I'm cool. No, Jesus delivers you by paying the price for you. You are now no longer a slave. That rank and file must be given up because it's no longer valid in Christ. And that, that's why we have to go where he leads us. You know, um, it doesn't mean you don't go to work. doesn't mean you don't pay your taxes. doesn't mean uh, you don't follow the laws. It doesn't mean you become a, mer- a mercenary. doesn't mean you become a, uh, a militia member going to take back the kingdom from Jesus by force like the crusades and all that. It doesn't mean anything like that. It doesn't mean something physical. You know, there are plenty of people that can be affiliated. For example, you could be living on Park Avenue, eating prime rib and uh, foie gras, <laughs> and, and be on your way to the Lord, to the kingdom. You can be on the street begging for bread, obviously disconnected from everything, completely disconnected from the world, right? And on your way to hell. So you see, 
that does not constitute, uh, there is no theorem there that gets one off the hook legally. Just being poor, begging for bread, does not get a pass um, if one is not covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and is, you know, taken by him. Two in the field, one taken, the other left, is a spiritual thing. Two in the field, one's taken by the Lord into the fold, spiritual. The other's left. It was a metaphor. Such will be the t- at the time of the coming of man. So we look too much to the physical, like, well, I'm separate. I don't sin. I don't go to see porno movies or hang out at porno parlors. I don't do drugs. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I take care of my body. I take care of my family. I've done everything exactly right. The Lord is pleased. Not necessarily. People do all these things to please the Lord because their churches or their affiliations or their whatever, it's good to be charitable, have all these external things, but it's the internal life, the internal spirit, the connection or disconnection with him, which is the bride of Christ. And that connection is what makes one spotless, not your deeds in the world necessarily. The deeds should flow from your spirit, but we all know the flesh is corrupt. It's going to do corrupt things even after one is saved. And you might even do worse. So judging the book by its cover, by the external sin life, is not going to answer it either. Like I said, um, you know, um, it's not about us. And different people are led differently. Like some people are led to do a lot, admission work and this and that, and help the poor. And they just seem like they're going to be in the ultimate heaven with God. Other people who are just floundering and still going by their selfish desires, but are dedicated to the Lord and legally they're in a better shape than the other one that's doing all this obvious charity. You know, Jesus spoke about this so much in the Sermon on the Mountain after that of, you know, when you fast, anoint your head with oil, look happy. Don't look like some beleaguered guy showing everyone how you're suffering and fasting. You know, that's not the spirit of that. You know, you want to, uh, well, we'll get to the, the, to the prophets in a minute. What you want to do is you want to understand that it's the, it's this connection to the Lord. And obviously when you do stuff and when you sin, you cause disconnection. And the reason you cause disconnection is because uh, it allows for the enemy to get in, to get control. The enemy will always, every day of your life, especially if you're a believer, want to get control. And you guys are targeted more so than anyone else because the people that he already has, you know, uh, and they all look like they're do-gooders. Uh, they all look like pillars of society, most of them. You know, the, the enemy is really good that way. Uh, so, you know, you will look, or the people I've seen that look terrible, or they look terrible, you go, oh, that, that sinner there, that couldn't be a, a saint of the Lord or anything like that. Um, you know, and the, and the Catholic Church will give out sainthood to people who've done obvious external works. But the Lord is after hearts, souls, minds. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And also the work should follow the faith at some point. But as I said, different people start at different places. The moment that he takes you, you're taken. You're going with him. You may be a mess. Society might call you a mess. Your parents may call you a mess. Your family may call you a mess. Your wife might divorce you. Your husband may divorce you. Your uh, job may fire you. You may have a relapse with alcohol, drugs, whatever, just from meeting the Lord and having that encounter. I've seen that too. So I'm caution people to think they know. And it's almost like what we have to do is suspend our judgments about ourselves and others. Like, for example, okay, you know, 
you didn't do right and you beat yourself up. You know, you say you're not fit for the kingdom, blah, 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 blah. But the Lord's already taken you, so that's, that's a moot point and a stupid thing to say. It's, it's too bad you sinned. Too bad you opened the door. Too bad, you know, Satan was used to rub your nose in it. Too bad that it just all went south on you and that you are suffering. That's awful. But again, that suffering uh, can be changed simply by refocusing your focus off yourself and onto the Lord. Then that suffering becomes learning. Then that learning becomes more love. Then that love becomes deliverance. Then that deliverance becomes a path. Then that path becomes a way. Then that way becomes a life. Then that life becomes eternal life. Done. Then the, the ultimate work of the Lord, the bride of Christ, the new Jerusalem, the finale, the form it takes is not something we would accept now, like we have physical and spiritual. In those, that form, the two are not dissimilar. In other words, there's not a spiritual and then an opposite being a, like a physical. It's all one thing. Time is the same thing. It's like, yes, there's, everything, is, everything is available and going on at all times and places at the same moment. So that's a very, um, you know, big adjustment. But that's the work that's being done. In other words, that's the deliverance to the goal. And that work that's being done is being done. And, you know, you have to have faith when you pass on, when you die. People say, well, everyone's going to be forgiven in the Lord and all that. Well, they have all these rules, set up man-made rules of, well, the punishment only goes of this amount of time. Then you get another chance to be, you know, they torture themselves to make sure everybody is saved. Well, yeah, that's, that's kind of a, like a, um, a, a very physical 3D way of looking at it. Every, everybody is, who is of the Lord w was always of the Lord from you know, the beginning. And this thing we're, that's playing out right here is a part of the process of pain and learning and joy and various emotions and, and, and you know, realizing on earth that we realize we can't make it on our own. Man cannot govern himself. Man cannot take care of himself. Man playing with technology will destroy himself. The Lord's hand is in this. He's in control and he must lead us. So if the Lord has taken you, then you are separate from the Babylon system. If you bow down to the Babylon system, though the Lord has you, um, this conflict can go to the second death if you actually bow your heart. I mean, if, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if you're not really in the Lord, but there's a lot of prodigals that belong to the Lord who are over there working in the fields of Satan, working in the, you know, entertainment industry or this or that, and part of the whole milieu of the whole thing, and people think they're ranked and filed and this and that, but they don't really belong there. So the Lord never loses anyone because he never lost them from the, the beginning of time and eternity. Nothing has been lost. So when you try to theorize about, well, everything, you know, no one is saved, every, the whole, is the rock saved or the planet saved or you tell me they're all lost? No, everything is contained within the Lord that is. If something is, you see, that's what when you have opinion, oh, those Satanists, they're lost. The satanic world, all those people have sowed to it, they're lost. Well, there's two ways of looking at that. One is, do they, do they exist? Or is this like an illusion for you and your growth and your progress? I contend that the world is each of our illusions and that the, the path we have is based on the work the Lord is doing to affect the changes in us he wants to see so that he will finish the work that he wants to see so that the birth of this, you know, the man-child, the birth of... Um, the return of Christ, all these things are kind of contained within this work where you say, why is there such pain and suffering? Now there's, there's learning and there's, there's a fallen state and there's a need of deliverance and there's a need of a solution, but the solution in man's terms is not acceptable because it's not logical, meaning, okay, I'll be your, uh, you know, I'll be your daddy and I'll just take all the uh, pain off of you and you can just have a Disneyland life. Then, of course, that would be the most hateful thing anyone could ever do that's what Satan does. He's allowed to do that, give you a Disneyland life, but it's a, a vapid, empty life that's heading for a, a, like a train wreck to a disaster anyway. So you're being, because of your decision to go along, 
you're being coddled because you're going to be a sacrifice. So they will, you, they will coddle you and give you stuff knowing that, you know, when it's time to collect your soul that you, 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 will, you will lose it. So you're being rewarded for giving that up. And that's basically, um, you know, the world as it is today. And that's the thing that the people of the Lord, but the Lord wants to take a remnant. And what he wants to do is, despite all odds, deliver that remnant and blossom the kingdom of God where these, this world falls away. And the people here are as if they never were, so they never were. In other words, all this passes away, but the Lord's word and the Lord's people remain forever and ever. Uh, Book of Daniel, chapter 12. And so if there's a wake-up call to people, you know, and mind you, if, if say you get a wake-up call and goes, gosh, I need out of the Satanism, I think I'll go get another job. Um, you know, because it's so corrupt, it's so awful, I've seen things that I can't even believe, I need to get out of here. You know, you can't save yourself, you can't run. It's more like the whole thing freaks you out and you just have a breakdown and you cry out to the Lord and he takes you. He must take you, he must draw you. You know, you have to be drawn to the Father and drawn to the Son. The Father must draw you to the Son, but at the same time, the Son must take you to the Father. It's this thing that has to happen. It's called baptism of the Holy Spirit, where you have a, a, a Holy Spirit in you, and this baptism you go through means, and you become consecrated to Him, you know, even if you rebel. And that's where people get confused with this for once saved, always saved. And most of the people that tout that have never been saved. So, you, you know, but they think they are. So yeah, that's the dichotomy that we've had to deal with. But that's the thing, the Lord, that was my particular ministry, my particular calling, because the Lord showed me all the churches and showed me what was wrong and actually showed me them worshiping or giving ode in place to Lucifer right in front of us, right in front of Trish and me, actually giving Lucifer praise in the church property in a ministry setting. And we saw this more than once. And it was like, wow, they must have slipped or not. It was weird. It was almost like they didn't have control of themselves, but he wanted us to see that. And yet these were the elders. They were the um, workers. They were the, 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 the ministers. They were the, uh, the, the ushers. They were the, uh, the, 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 the fabric of the actual church were um, Luciferian twits. And, you know, you wondered, and I, you know, at that time we had a motorcycle and we could, sh- we saw them throwing curses on, on us on the bike, hoping we'd crash and burn. And um, the kind of love that you get out of that 501c3 is really something. But the reason we were targeted is because I'm really loud. I go in and I go right to wherever they are and start saying, hey, I'm me, hey, look at you, hey, Satan, Baba. I just start in blathering it out. I, I put it all out there. I go right to their face because I want to find out, you know, if that's really going on. And then they turn. So through that method, you know, we verified and uh, mapped the entire church system and, you know, it applies to the whole thing globally. And it's not my fault, you know. I came here basically to serve God, you know, to, to you know, take the good with the bad and do the best I could, you know, knowing I would be going back home or restored to where I was, which is where I am right now, but I'm not there because I'm here. So there's this multiple locational aspect of reality that people will never talk. Maybe New Agers will talk about it, but Christians won't because it, the book doesn't say that. Well, it does say that but you're not getting the rima through the scriptures to understand. Like two in the field, one is taken, the other left. They say, well, that's, that's about the rapture and the physical thing. And then you say, well, um, no, that's really about the way the Lord deals with us as humanity. That when the Lord comes, he, there'll be two in the field and one goes with the Lord, you know, in any given situation also is the fulfillment or the proof of the wheat and the tares will go together. It's the ultimate proof, the wheat and the tares grow together. So there'll be one in the field, you know, two in the field, one taken wheat, one left tare, one taken lamb, one left goat. And that dividing is extremely important and it happens throughout the entire Bible. You know, it's a given man is rebellious, will rebel against God that, you know, that, that at this point, God is becoming even outlawed. This Christmas, I'm, I'm appalled 
but not that appalled because America to me is a joke at this point. You know, a complete, utter socialist, Marxist, um, New World Order, uh, corporation joke. <laughs> you know, with a big fat temple in, in the center of Washington, D.C., which is praise to Lucifer, our God. That's basically what the architecture of Washington says. <laughs> praise to Lucifer, our God. No nation that has praise to Lucifer, our God, is going to last at all. And I can guarantee it. And so I, if I were Israel, I'd be taking that little op, that shaft of Baal down and pretty fast at the Knesset as well, but then they have the same architecture. But then don't worry, you can go to Belgium, see the same thing. Oh, hey, wait a sec, India, it's all over India. Hey, wait, in China, it's everywhere in China. Wait, the Aztecs, oh, it was everywhere down in the Maya. Oh, gosh, South America, yep. Underground pyramids, are, yep, the pyramid itself, totally evil. I remember that guy, Patrick Heron, you know, he touted himself as such a big-time scholar. You know, he was as... Frank Whalen said the guy was in the system, you know. That was Whalen's explanation when I asked well, why this or why that about Patrick Heron, you know. And um, just another false guy. And so bottom line on it, he starts going with Isaiah 19, 19 about how the, the God made that, you know, that was a temple of God in the desert and this and that. When No, it's the pyramid. It's the... Um, you know, basically the all-seeing eye and the capstone, it's, it's, it's the obelisk. It's the same thing. It's satanic. What are you talking about? It's not an altar to the Lord at all. <laughs> you know? And, um, but there was no, he wrote a whole book about it. There, there was no moving him off of that. You know, that was, he said that was Rima. And it's like, well, but, you know, it's like telling me a piece of crap is caviar. Go ahead and eat it. You know, I know what it is. We, we all know what it is. The pyramid is actually, in a sense, the gatherer of souls. You know, there's a big technological aspect and sort of, you know, high-tech UFO kind of alien sort of uh, nanotechnology, DNA kind of matrix thing to the pyramid and its, and its relation to the soul. And the stealing of souls is basically taking the soul out of you, containing it, and then selling it. And, you know, the, um, like when I had my vision of the moon and, and soul scalpers there, that when people die, the tunnel of white light is provided by the fallen angels. And they put all these people in front of you, all your old friends and all that, and come on into the light. It's all just basically a seduction to get that soul, to get that light body or that soul right at that point and to capture it and to do what they will with it, which I'm not an expert in this field. I just know what I saw. Strangely enough, a few years later after I saw it and said it, John Lear said the same thing. There was like this soul scalping device on the moon. They said exactly what I said. No, I can't prove that I said it first. The point is, is that how odd that someone else would say the same thing. You can't make that up. And I do believe that Lear was pretty honest and trying to find the truth, but he couldn't because, you know, obviously he was trying to do it through his mind and through his intellect, which you can't do because you're dealing with extreme... Uh, heavy-duty spiritual aspects. When you're dealing with fallen angels and aliens and technology and the interface with the soul, when you're dealing with all that, you're dealing with extreme uh, out of our uh, ability to comprehend type of stuff and, and in a linear way. But you can understand it through your heart, certainly. You can understand it through your, through your soul because, you know, you, you know everything in that. In that so, but you have to start relating more to your soul and spirit, less on your brain, and then you can start understanding some of these things. The ancients, some of the ancient uh, peoples that were here, and indigenous peoples, understood all that perfectly without ever having oh, ever cracked a book. So it's totally possible, but then you can use it for good, obviously, or you can use it for evil via sorcery, which is really science, and it's really... Um, the science of, 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 of manipulation of the spiritual realm to affect a physical result. And um, they're very, very good at it. They have castles in the sky and all kinds of worlds they've created and portals and, and uh, time travel. And, you know, the people here on Earth have, um, I've always said, have had time travel from the beginning. And some of this alien stuff is, you know, human time travel gone awry. <laughs> And they're not from another planet. They're, they're us, they're genetically completely mutilated and looking like aliens. And there's that, you know, whole thing with the military-industrial complex 
and there is the um, you know the 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 you know all that's doing is enforcing more of this idea that the military industrial complex you know or the luciferian military industrial complex and fallen angels in a sense are controlling the souls on earth who are being trapped here by a um a, a dna issue that has made them fallen where they were stuck here and they can't go to these various realms as we did before we were captured we're in a prison situation here we need out jesus is the way out you know and then to restore back to where we were so it's not storation it's restoration restoration and you know we all have memories of who we are it's just that that it's hard to understand because we're in a physical uh, thing and our minds are locked up and our, we're propagandized and we're assaulted every day with, you know, that this is it. And, of course, this isn't it. I've gone so far afield from what I wanted to say. Um, but I thought it would be important to kind of address this, this whole thing about the prison, the legal issue. And there's a legal reason why we're here in, you know, being punished. And most people, I think your lives are, you know, you know, I know I say take the good with the bad, but most people have more bad than good in terms of things that happen to them. And certainly now more bad than good in terms of things that happen to you. Legally, all one really has to do is believe in Jesus Christ and, and, and love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul and ask the Lord to forgive you and, and re- repent. When he says repent, that means you, you, you say, Lord, you take me and I renounce my contract with the world, my contract with the devil, my position that I was initiated into, whatever happened when I was a boy, all those things um, become canceled, if you will. And so that you only have your focus on one thing. You still go through the world, like, you know, but you're not legally connected to that situation. The people that will, will try to get their provision and so forth from that path. There's only two paths you can go, as I say in my song. And one leads to destruction, one leads to, you know, the other way. So if you try to have both, um, you know, it's a short circuit. Like if you try to put the, you know, a, a piece of metal between your positive and negative on your battery in your car, you'll blow your car up. You can't have it both ways. You cannot serve two masters, but you can't have a positive charge and a negative charge have a battery in one and connect it with a, you'll electrocute yourself. You will implode. You will melt down. You will be destroyed. And that's what, unfortunately, the church system has provided, the Babylon church has provided for the public uh, under the auspices of mind control and propaganda that, you know, this is the way, you know, what also called the middle way. I think Bill Clinton referred to it as the middle way. So you accept you know, doing evil over here and doing good over here, and it balances out, and you go in the middle. Uh, the middle way is the way of suicide. And um, as Bill Clinton will soon find out. <laughs> you know, I mean, but he has a choice, you know. Um, he has a choice, just like everyone else has a choice. You know, th- those of you who, who, who chose the Lord early on and who belong to him, um, the world is never going to love you, you know. The world's never going to accept you. I was telling Trish, I used to get all kinds of trophies when I was a kid, you know, and I won everything. I won everything. I won the, the, the got straight A's and I won everything. And, you know, I was just like that. And then all of a sudden there was a time and the trouble came and then I was sequestered and then tortured and then abused and then set up for murder and all kinds of things happened in my youth and as a teenager. And those trophies stopped at that time and they never resumed. <laughs> I was telling you, isn't that interesting? Because I belong to the Lord, and 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 you know, it's it's like yeah, because the world, just as uh, in the Who song, um, the Tommy song, um, the world is saying to to Tommy, you know, we we're, we're not going to take you, never did, and never will, blah 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 blah. Um, no, they're not going to take you if you belong to the Lord. The world will never, never has, and never will. Once that's been established as to who you are and who you belong to, if you don't. Let me put it another way. If you don't belong to the family of the tribe you're in or the, the, the family of this or the family, of that, if you don't belong to some guild, group, circle, social, so whatever on the earth, then that's it. It's over. You know, you, they, they know you're not, 
if they can't sense the rank and file, then you're another one that's disconnected wandering around, and then they're going to worry about you, you know, wandering around because they're going to think, oh, oh my, what are we going to do about this? And the, the issue is, no, it's not what you're going to do about that. What are, um, what's God going to do about you? who think you're some sort of honcho that actually has the right to actually say something about someone walking around, quote, disconnected, which is your term, which means they're not beholden to the Luciferian hell that you're going to, that befalls you and your family even before you die. You go into strife, and right now it's economic strife, economic bankruptcy, poor health, and death. Wow. But they keep choosing it. And the Lord told me they're going to choose it. So I honor it. Okay. I acknowledge that you make your choice and I respect that. Okay. I respect that. I am not going to tell you, you better repent. The time is at hand. If you don't belong to the Lord, you can repent all you like. It won't do any good. People, you can say, I want Jesus all you like. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It probably won't. If you're just trying to get out of, like, you feel you're going to go to hell, so you're going to try to get out of it the last minute, it's, I'm sorry, but, you know, the odds are you're just uh, fooling yourself. You're a fool. You know, the Lord takes those, the ones that belong to the Lord are those, he makes sure in his word that you understand the world's divided with the wheat and the tares, sheep and the goats, good and the bad, up and down, positive and negative, good and evil, etc. He's very careful in his word to point out Old and New Testament, that there's his people and there's the others. There's his people and there's the hybrids. And that he is against the heathen and the, the non believer and the scoffers. And he is against the hybrids as well, which would be the fallen angels, high technology, um, you know, the book of Enoch. Uh, you know, Enoch in the book, no matter what you believe about the book of Enoch, he goes and the, the, the watchers, the fallen angels, they tell him, please go back to God and beg for us to be able to come back in. We want back in. We're going to do good this time. And the answer was no. I think that's the most pertinent thing about it. If you know that about the book of Enoch, you kind of know the whole story. I think that's the most pertinent story of all. In other words, it's important to have this division. And this division divides us all as truth divides. Because the only way that the, the people that I refer to as the social circles and the career circles and the connected ones, they all go by one credo, and that is they must live by a lie and call it truth in order to get along. And when they agree to do that, then they're welcomed into the group. And that's really the initiation in the world is that you agree to lie and you agree to say there is no Satan and no evil. You can also agree to things like partial birth abortion and you know, endless wars and all that, you know, you, you, you say it's all for the good and, or whatever it is, you know, whatever manifestation comes out. But I mean, it's like they want people to say partial birth abortion and getting God out of the platform, that's good. Well, what is that? That's not just satanic, that is Satan. So what are those people? They're tares, they're the goats. Their, their God symbol is a goat, Baphomet. Quite simple, or the honchos over them have Baphomet, you know. The, so that would go to the Luciferians, and you know, who use Washington D.C. as a temple, which is which is what it was intended to be when it was when the when it was erected, when it was built. It was intended not the early White House in those early days, but you know, the the whole establishment of this sort of Masonic Luciferian temple in Washington D.C. was to make it a constant temple. You know, just like um, the buildings were sacred in ancient Greece, you had the Acropolis and, you know, the different, right, the, the Oracle at Delphi and, you know, all the architecture meant something in Greece. It's been ages since I studied, you know, the columns mean something and the, there's, there's all kinds of obelisks. But the whole idea is to make it sacred space. In other words, when you get into the Acropolis and some of the, you know, and the, the place of the Senate and all these things, those are sacred temples. And what they want to do is do the ancient Greek temples because many of these people stem out of the mystery religions in Congress would be like a mystery rite. And so, it, you know, and then they also have their secret rites away from the cameras and when they go to meet and you have some kind of comical ones at Bohemian Grove and all that. 
where it's kind of, you know, outlandish. But, you know, meeting in their groves and meeting in their secret societies and their whatever, this is what the connected people do. Um, because they they belong to a strange God, a different God. They belong to the God of this world. They don't belong to the Lord. Those who belong to the Lord don't need to do things in secret. They really don't. <laughs> you know, because they know already from the powerful Almighty God that everything done in secret is seen by the Lord and all the angels and everyone, including all of us, all the time, like it's on a big video screen. There is nothing done in secret that is not known by all at some level, whether you just feel it in your spirit and unease. Yes, that's how I felt during the election. There was a, a lot done in secret. And oh my, but it wasn't hidden, was it? No, it was not. It was not hidden at all. It's out for all to see. 9-11, out for all to see. Um, you know, uh, Benghazi, it's out for all to see. You know, call it corruption if you like. Criminality, corruption, Satanism, Lucifer, Ode to Lucifer, Cosa Nostra uh, and Mafia, uh, Blood Oath to Lucifer, whatever. It's all the same. And what do you expect when they take the, these oaths? Uh, you know, and I know the witches hate it. You know, they hate this kind of talk and all that. But, you know, let me give you your due. The witches um, who run things, the sisterhood, if you, they don't like to be called witches. Okay, the sisterhood who runs things from behind the scenes, they have all the men are blackmailed and they put the men in, they make them presidents and kings. It's the women behind the scenes that make those appointments. And I don't know that people, and they have their own secret society, their own meeting, their own rank and file, and they decide which ones go which, where and who's right. And the women are kind of in a way handlers of their husbands who are compromised. And that's the way of the world. That's the way all politics is. That's the way all the world in the high circles of society, the whole thing runs like that. And so it's really the sisterhood. And there was one movie I told you a long time ago, The Mists of Avalon, Mists of Avalon, that show this very principle at work. I had so many people write me and go, what do you mean? The men dominate. It's all corrupt. The men get more pay. They get more... No, 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 no. They don't run anything. They're compromised. They're blackmailed. They, they're playing a role. The fact that they get more money just hides the real truth all the better, but it's not hidden. It's not hidden here in this effort port. It's completely out in the open. But then I've seen it, you know, growing up. I saw the top people in the world, the top elites, the elites that you would say are the elitist of the elites. You know, um, you know that my family rubbed elbows with all of them, met them all. You know, they had a Boeing and Lockheed and this and that and the military industrial complex and you know, Eisenhower and, and Nixon and, uh, you know, Bob Hope and Walt Disney and blah, blah. I was telling someone about this the other day. And some, of the, some of the incidents that happened with various people, I'm not going to go about that here. There's a lot of anecdotes about stories about these people and these elites and, and what they do. But I think, you know, um, the main thing to know is that they that ran Los Angeles were and they ran it, you know, L.A. Confidential, the 1940s, the gang, Mickey Cohen being used by the Hoi Polloi to uh, get rid of people that shouldn't be there and so on and so forth so society could run smoothly and the, and the elite and the, all the glamorous ones and the, the top society people could all look pristine like there's no dirt on their hands, but really they're using these mobsters to kind of clean up their, right, and they own the police and they own this and they own that, huh? That whole thing that spreads the whole world, the whole world's the same, it's the same mess, it's the same nightmare, right? It's the same thing. Well, I knew all about that for real, in real time. I knew about, all about that. Yeah. See, the hoity-toity elite kind of people, they need the, the, the little thug mafia types to do their dirty work. And that's always been, you know, to do their assassinations and their whatnot. Yeah, it's always been that way. And then, you know, when you multiply that by the military and the CIA and the FBI and all the power games that go on in Washington, you see people dropping dead left and right all over the place, people being discredited, career generals purged. You get an idea that what you're seeing on the surface, it doesn't equal what you're seeing, you know, needs to be only understood by what's going on behind the scenes. You, can, you see the eventual result and then you have to deduce backwards 
to what must have been going on. Like to a guy like Petraeus, it wasn't about that floozy that was there to bring him down. It had nothing to do with it. That was just like a hole card that they played because of something he was getting ready to do, which may not have been about Benghazi. It could have been about something else. But it's smoke and mirrors in that way. So the Lord knows this. It was the same way in the time of Herod. Remember Herod? What he did? I mean, every king, every empire, all the way back to the beginning, has always been identical to this one. This is no different. So the Lord provides a way out because this is sheer hell. It may look like you see the velvet glove, but you know we all know the iron fist is right under that velvet glove. So you need a way out, and it's you can't fight City Hall. This is the way of the world. You need to find a way within yourself to get right with the Lord so that legally you are separated from that situation. And on that day, um, you would lose your rank and file, and on that day, uh, they'll jump on you. <laughs> even though you love them back. It'll be supernatural. It'll be like you can't understand you've done nothing and out of the blue bad things start happening or whatever. But there's also good things happening. More understanding, more strength. He that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. A clear path to go on. The love of the Lord, the love of God, the love of his creation, the love of other people, the love, the forgiving of yourself, the healing of yourself, the healing of the nation. The he- seeing a real path to hope. Real, real hope. And the price, though, is that, you know, people have become more and more hostile toward the Lord. I mean, Jesus failed at America. Jesus, you don't even hear his name mentioned anymore around here. So, I mean, he's gone from this. You know, uh, yeah, God is gone from this. I mean, he's, he's basically, this is, a, this is a fait accompli, and I'm going to prove it in a minute with a couple of, with a couple of statements. But it's always going to get down to the same message. You know, it's, you want the Lord to take you. So me, I've been raptured. F- saving my physical body uh, doesn't really matter that much because I already am a, a body in uh, another dimension, let's put it that way, that is already whole. So I'm with the Lord in the air right now. I have been raptured, if you like. It's a, it's, it, the, the meaning of the scriptures is a little bit different than the way people take it always to be an external, physical, 3D reality. And it's not going to be like that. Jesus is not going to land here with a, a set of, uh, you know, with a personal jet pack on him and go, you know, touch down on the uh, Mount of Olives or wherever he's going to touch down and, and, uh, or the East Gate and, um, you know, and, and literally go through uh, the, the city of Jerusalem and, uh, and subdue the world from there. It's, it's just a different kind of, you know, it's a different thing. It's like, it's, a, it's, it's hard to explain that, that, you know, I'm not saying the Bible is wrong. I'm just saying the external manifestation of, you know, clothing, times, customs could, it's not, ex- you know, you've got, you got to look at it through the lens of man's culture and get to the truth beyond some of the literal things that are written. And there are some things to be taken literally. I mean, there's especially the advice and uh, the wisdom that's there. But there's a lot of things that are taken in a more general, broad way, like two in the field, one taken, the other left, is pertaining to how God takes his own from among the heathen. It's, it's just the way that salvation happens to people. When you least expect it, the Lord returns. Well, when I least expected it, the Lord took me. Good thing I was good and beaten down and broken. So I was ready to go, yes, master. Yes, Lord, take me, please. I love you. Please don't ever leave me. I need you right by my side every minute. I'm going crazy. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Oh my gosh, I'm completely, I I just can't go another minute. Please, Lord, help, 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 help. So in that state, I was, you know, he didn't have to work too hard to get me on board. But then right after that, seriously, I met all the churchy. I mean, it was like right away he put me into ministry to see all this. And, you know, our lives get threatened. We're told to not prophesy, to shut up. We're told that, um, why don't we, that, that, that our walk in Christ is not valid because it has to be in concert with the church. We need to start playing with the team and all that team I thought we're all beholden to Jesus and we take our instruction from him and then he moves us into various into and out of groups and 
associations and people. And we all get along wonderfully because we have the Lord at the head, not each other. So there's no codependence between each other because we're all individuals together. So we're free to love one another rather than criticize or hurt or put someone in a slave position while we rise above them. And all these power trips people play, it just makes me sick. But that's what happens when you don't have the Lord. You get power trips. One person trying to be above another. It's like, if you belong to the Lord, those power trips don't work. Codependence doesn't work. We, you know, we're not codependent on each other. We are codependent, if you will, on the Lord. But we're dependent on him, not codependent. We are completely dependent. He, he doesn't need anything from us to, to exist. We are dependent on him. And then that eliminates codependent relationships with everybody else. We don't look to people to save us. But the world does. When I look at Greece and France and all these other places, look always looking for a bailout, someone to say, it's hilarious watching this. It's like musical chairs. When the music stops, oh my, who's going to lose? But they're looking to each other to save them. And it's like, I could tell Merkel and, uh, well, Sarkozy's gone, but the new guy, Holland, and uh, uh, I don't know the, the person of Greece um, or Italy or any of the rest, but I could tell them, you can't save yourselves. Someone should tell the Pope, why don't you just get real? You know, get real and tell the people what's going on and help them to come to Christ right now for real. I know people would take issue with that because they believe, like my grandmother believed, that, you know, the church is sacred and the church is Jesus. And if you're not um, uh, beholden to the Catholic Church, then, you know, salvation is the church. And there are scriptures to back that up, I know. Salvation is the church. On this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell won't come against it, you know, uh, regarding Peter. Um, so that's kind of like the, 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 the hallmark upon which the Catholic Church and the Catholic faith is built. Um, and therefore the only way of salvation is the church uh, because the gates of hell won't come against it. This, therefore this is the way. And whatever the, uh, the, the, uh, the elders and the pontiffs and the fathers and the various you know, hierarchy of the Vatican come up with. It's sacred because they are the official of uh, representation of God on earth. And on and on and on. When, and, and my issue with it is, um, but that's the way of man and has been corrupt from the very beginning. Does that mean God doesn't work through the Catholic Church? No, it means he does, but he's not exclusive. He's working through all the religions and all the non-religions through all the institutions and all the non-institutions, through all the earth and all the people therein. You don't need church in the Bible to be saved either. That's another misnomer. You just need to be taken by the Lord or have a heart for God or just be what God wants. But the hardest thing for people to accept and the reason that God is being laughed and cheered out of not just the DNC platform, but now every, the Republican, everybody. Why? It's because it's not, and here it comes, here it comes, wait for it. Drum roll! Drum roll, please! It's not, what's the word? Inclusive. Don't you love that word? When you drive into Santa Fe on Cerrillos, just before you cross St. Francis on your way down to the plaza, if you look to the right, just before the railroad tracks, you'll see a sign that says Santa Fe, an inclusive community. Inclusive is another code word for um, Marxism, socialism, um, I don't know, all the stuff, you know, environmentalism, environmental Nazis, gay rights, women's rights, rights of minorities, this and that, but rejection of God, rejection of Christianity, rejection of the manger scene, rejection of things like that that's going on all over the country right now. These are all inclusive. They can't be inclusive without being exclusive with regards to Yahweh. And that's the, the, the uh, it's just like I'm here watching, I'm going, do these people actually think they're getting away with this? Can they be that stupid in this country? Are people here really that dumb? I was going to say effing dumb. You know, I mean, what else can you say about them? You know, and, and Lord, what do you think? I mean, they're basically 
when they're not watching TV, they're on their iPhones or they're listening to, <clears throat> you know, vapid uh, pop music about um, baby, baby, I, I had the best sex with you of my life, blah, 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 getting abortions, being good little global citizens. I mean, what do we, what do, we do with that? Uh, note, I know just what to do with that. Thus saith the Lord. Enough said. I rest my case. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. Um, God is an all-exclusive community. A totally exclusive community. Not inclusive at all. You're only there at the behest of the Lord. Period. Your free will, yes, I, that enters into it, but ultimately he knows what you're going to choose. So it's like, if you belong to him, you're in, in an exclusive. So therefore, you're the enemy of the state. The state is all inclusive, all except for Yahweh and, uh, and the Jews too, you know. I know, it's all going to come down to Jesus in the end. This whole thing comes down to Jesus in the end, and that brings me to the topic I wanted to cover. I've been going about an hour, and I didn't cover what I wanted to cover. It's time and eternity. For those of you thinking there's going to be a big wrap-up, the way the Bible lays it out, and we've been talking about this. I've had a lot of time and, and, and been yearning for an answer from the Lord. Remember how we have Barack Obama? He's like, he is the, the um, you know, he, he fits so many of the paradigms, especially when he has this peace treaty with Israel and more things that are coming. Um, he is the AC. He's not the AC. No, he has... The qualification, it, like it's this type, he's fit. There are people out there that say he's not the Antichrist, but they, they, they've said that he's not a fierce king, so therefore he's disqualified. No, he is. He fits a lot of the uh, description. He hasn't fulfilled it all, but he, he fits better than any other human being we've seen. But is he, we can't say yes, and we can't say no, ever, really. Because the literal thing that we're seeing, say, in the book of Revelation, that we look at like a TV show, isn't really the meaning of the book of Revelation. The beast that no one can make war with, well, yep, the military-industrial complex, we've got that. The head of it, uh, the beast, um, you know, can't make war with him. Um, you know, and then we have Barack Obama, undefeatable. Yeah, we got that. Uh, the mark of the beast, you know, we may have a, a medical chip from, um, that, that has nanotechnology that affects the DNA that will cancel the Lamb's Book of Life, etc. You can't make this stuff up. How would you be canceled out of the Lamb's Book of Life? Answer, because you're no longer human. That's why. So let's say those things line up, then you should say, well, in a few years then we're going to have, but you can't put it that way. Because as things start lining up, they also recede so this idea of finding a three and a half year period or a seven year period where this absolutely happens um, right now uh, if everything happened according to plan it would be according to their timeline 2020 which used to be on the Daniel timeline 2016 but they know that's never going to happen by then and I can tell you it's not happening by 2020 or 30 or 50 or 100 sorry the great, there will, will be World War III, mass death, horrible famine, horrible disease, just horrible things happening and then clearing up and then a healing and then, you know, it's just basically gone on like that. But see, it's irrelevant because you see what's happening here is not really real. This is, if it was real, that would be another thing. Then I'd say, okay, take, um, don't take the Rima out of the scriptures. It's literally a comic book, but it's a comic book template or storyboard of what actually will happen literally on the ground. Well, it's happened with the fall of the Roman Empire. It happened with the time of Adolf Hitler, uh, the great evil. It, he fit a lot of the, uh, you know, undefeatable, no lover of women. That was certainly Adolf Hitler. He fit a lot of those scriptures. The rabbis have put um, uh, Barack Obama as the last king, um, but they had Adolf Hitler as the last king, and they may have another one. So though I did go through all that, you know, I did not commit and will not commit to, you know, and I've said that Barack Obama, for some people, is the last name of the last king, so therefore it's the time of the end. It's like, no, no, we can't definitively say. 
that Barack Obama fits the Antichrist. And I cannot definitively say there will be a guy called the Antichrist with another guy called the false prophet. And it doesn't work like that. The false prophet could easily just be Islam. And the Antichrist could be Barack Obama. And the false prophet is Islam. And um, Or it could be another guy like in the Middle East that Barack Obama is giving praise to as the Antichrist where he, Obama, becomes the false prophet, whatever. But Obama fits right now the book of Daniel to a T. But that's no indication that we're on that, you know, three and a half to seven year clip of this is it. You know, this is the end right at this point in time. Time is irrelevant. We are eternal beings. We live in, in the, we are eternal beings within a false time space continuum in a prison situation. What we have is the Bible, but the Bible we only see through a glass darkly in terms of its prophecies. We can't see literally what's happening because it's a hologram and it's also multidimensional. So when you read the scriptures, you know, like just like my example of two in a field, one taking the other left, you read it holographically and you see that that's a message to all humanity about another thing. If you read the whole thing that way, then pretty soon you'll start seeing that what you thought was so literal in terms of a, a news event. News is irrelevant because it's trapped in time, therefore it's, it's invalid. News is just propaganda. It's what one, a person's opinion of what happened, which is not necessarily what happened. The Bible goes beyond that. There's a surface reality to it where you can go, this happened to these people, here's the genealogy of those people, here's the incident that happened in this situation, here's that situation, here's the movement of God's people along the way. But when you encounter it, it's really speaking to your generation, even though you're in the uh, Old Testament. For example, I'm in the Old Testament of Jeremiah, when it's, it's basically talking about dishonest prophets. And this is a message to the church here today. Um, for the land is full of adulterers, uh, for beginning of swearing the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their curse is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane, yea, in as um, in my house I have found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as a slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal, and caused my people Israel to error. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, and none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood, and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of, of the Lord. They, will say, they say still unto them that despise me, The Lord hath said, you shall have peace, and they say unto every one that is walketh, walking after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. For who both stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word, who hath marked his word and heard it, behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed until he have performed the thoughts of his heart, and in the latter days you shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have spoken to them, and yet they, I have not spoken to them, and yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. I am... Uh, a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off. 
or am I not a God at hand, or am I a God afar off? So, I, well, the, the, the people in the prophecy realm who are turning people from their evil doings and under the Lord are doing, in other words, are doing, are upright in the Lord as prophets. Because they're turning people from their evil ways, from, from Satan, from the world, to the Lord. Turning people to the Lord, the only way of hope that there is. So therefore, they're turning them to it because they walk in truth. Therefore, they're okay. And I think for a, a prophet, a worker, a minister, an evangelist, a teacher, a healer, whatever you are, whatever gifts, that that's the main hallmark of doing the Lord's bidding. You're turning people to him. That's the See, the whole Bible comes down to, well, what's a false prophet? Well, according to this, a false prophet are those who say to you, so to me, the church, 501c3 church would be the false prophet, yes? Because they say, what you're doing is great. We're going to make you feel good in here on Sunday. What you're doing here is great. You're, no, you got no problem with the Lord. The Lord understands. You just keep going the way you're going. You're fine. That is what Jeremiah is talking about. In other words, when, you, when the sword of, uh, is about to befall you, they say, ah, it's fine. Go ahead on your way. You're, you know, don't worry. The Lord loves you. And, and they keep you on that path, on the wrong path. That is uh, false prophecy. When they turn you from your evil ways to the right path, that is true prophecy. It has little to do with, you know, in the spirit of this, it has little to do with false predictions of events that will or won't happen. It has everything to do with evil versus goodness. The false prophets turn people to wickedness or keep them on the path of wickedness by saying, thus saith the Lord. Uh, all good things are going to happen to you. You're on the right track. That's what Jeremiah is saying. That's the wicked prophet. The, 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 the good prophet says, turn from your evil ways. You're doing this, you're doing that. This is your position and repent and come to the Lord for salvation. I'm turn you to the Lord. Not turn from your wicked ways and be good. Turn from your wicked ways of worshiping what? And what was the complaint? Maybe we need to go back and see it just to make sure you understand what this is all about. It's just very simple, but been obscured by the church world. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in, wait for it, here it comes, drum roll please, Baal, Satan, and cause my people Israel to err. Hello? I.e., they prophesied in Baal while they were in the church and in the temple, saying it was Yahweh when it was Baal, and caused the people to err because they said, you people are doing just fine, even though the Lord sees them as Sodom and Gomorrah. Does that finally make sense? That's all it's about, and that's all we've been doing here for I don't know how many years now. But all we've been doing is um, talking about this situation. This has been my, Jeremiah 23, about verse uh, 10 on to 23, has been our ministry from the very beginning. That's all we have talked about for 10 years can be found in this chapter of the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 23, that, that, that starts with misdirected leaders, and I'm not. I'm, I'm. I'm really dealing with the prophets here, and dishonest prophets. The first half is misdirected leaders, and the second half is dishonest prophets. Jeremiah 23 sums up our ministry. I should just call it Jeremiah 23 ministry, and it would be exactly perfect. But it's not just Jeremiah 23 that deals with this issue. That they, in other words, when they tell you, and they're acting in the office of prophet, when the pastor tells you. You're on the right track in your counseling. Keep doing what you're doing. You know, God is pleased with you. When he's doing it out of Baal, 
meaning to keep you on the page, to keep you conformed, to keep you with the pack, to keep you connected, to keep you doing good in your job, to keep you uh, doing good with you, to keep you from being persecuted, to tell you that all good things are going to happen with you. He's prophesying out of Baal, and he's equal to Sodom and Gomorrah because he's promoting Baal, bait and switch, in the temple, abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation going on today has been going on since the beginning of time. It's when the um, basically uh, they worship God in the temple, but it's really switched to Satan. In other words, they're worshiping Satan, saying that it's God. And that's, it's, in other words, it's the, the desecration of the holy place is the abomination of de- desolation. So in the book of Daniel, it's meant to be both a specific thing, but it's also meant to be a wider uh, issue. The biggest problem that the church has is that Baal is worshipped in the form of Yahweh. G- G- Baal is there instead of Jesus. Jezebel is there instead of um, Mary. <laughs> I guess, you know, for the, for the Catholics. But, the, you know, well, for everybody, you know, as Mary is the mother of God and the, the example of, of, of motherhood and, and virtue and so forth. So when we have this situation of Baal, and and they tell you, it doesn't matter how much Bible study you do in those churches, it doesn't matter how much time that uh, Chuck Smith will take you through the uh, Bible in his two-year ministry school, um, I I can tell you that they they target, you know, people that are not going to be playing with the team and who are just beholden to the Lord. They want to purge them from the situation. So, I mean, well, I'm talking about something that I witnessed firsthand, uh, that that whole ministry school was totally corrupt. So there you go. What can I do? Uh, there's nothing I can do about it. But it's because he, they, uh, in Orange County, whether it's Costa Mesa, or they, um, you know, uh, Billy Graham, or whether it's, uh, you know, the rest of it, if they are telling you that, you know, you're doing fine, connected to society, conformed to society, in your job, in your way, you know, you're doing good, and it's all an external thing, and they're prophesying out of Baal. In other words, keep going, you're doing fine, rather than return to the Lord. The Catholic Church used to sell indulgences. I mean, how much more blatant can you get than that? They were operating out of Baal from the very beginning, and the idea there is, if you pay the priest, they'll give you absolution. Well, now you're paying for them to give you a prophecy of Satan on your head to keep you going down the path to your own destruction, and you pay them for that? That's all this is all about. It all, the entire Bible, if you want to understand Jesus, the Lord, the Bible, everything comes down to this one simple truth. Baal is in the place of Yahweh, the abomination of desolation, the desecration of the holy place, and the prophets of Baal are prophesying, you know, the name of Jesus and that thus saith the Lord and Jesus this and the Bible that, but they're coming from the place spiritually of Baal and concealing that from their congregation, but the fruits of which are, you're doing fine, no harm shall come upon you. And what does it say literally? No evil shall come upon you, says Jeremiah in in verse 17. So no evil will come upon you, you're beloved of God. And they will give this blessing out to everybody and making sure they're all on the same page and being monitored so they come back to church the next week or the next whatever. And um, they all claim not to be doing what it says here. You didn't think that here they have Baal up on a platform somewhere, did you? No, they're in the temple prophesying out of Baal. Baal is invisible, saying it's Yahweh. That's the complaint that the Lord is having right here. He says, I didn't say that. It's Baal in their hearts, invisible. They don't have a big symbol of a pyramid with an all-seeing eye that they're bowing down to there. They're, 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 having their, they're reading the scrolls and they're doing the, the same things they do in temple every, every Sabbath. And uh, they're, they're saying that, you know, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. You're doing good. You're fine. And they give everyone a pass, especially the bigger donors. How many times do the bigger donors get a pass and they don't have to repent? And do the priests tell them, you have to repent? No. 
they want you to keep doing what you're doing because they like the money. So they're preaching out of Baal saying, no evil shall come upon you when evil is right around the corner. The reason they say that is because they don't believe in God, the priests. They have no faith. And they don't understand the sp anything in the spiritual realm to begin with, and they shouldn't even be there in the first place. They're imposters. That's what I've seen with most churches. It's just false fruit. I turn on the um, religious channel, and I turn on, you know, the whatever it is, the Beast Network, TBN, and I just see one used car salesman after another. And when they get real positive and about prosperity, they're talk basically they're prophesying out of bail, like that Creflo Dollar guy. That's all out of bail. That's 100% false. On uh, his sister, Taffy. Who could forget that name? Taffy Dollar. Uh, if you have a name like Taffy Dollar, I mean, is this dollar name real? Is there really a line of people called Dollar? Is Dollar an actual name? I mean, maybe it is. Sounds to me like it's <coughs> a name that's trying to get money. So that is the basis of um, what the Lord says, the basis of all true prophecy, all true teaching, the whole Bible comes down to one thing. Everything in life comes down to just one thing, one decision, but it's beyond that. It's one thing. Everything in life comes down, as I say, to one thing, but the Bible comes down to one message and one only. It comes down to the word truth. And who are you in the truth? If you're in the truth, then you turn people to the Lord. Then you're always going to be focused in on that. If you uh, are, are someone who has embraced the lie, you'll be prophesying out of Baal, telling people that no evil will come on you, you're doing just fine, and give you a positive message so you'll feel good uh, whenever you go to the, uh, the temple, the church, the whatever it is. They'll tell you what you want to hear. And, and the Lord's saying, these, furthermore, to hear me out here, these are Satanists. They not only know what they do, they also, as Jesus said, do things in secret beyond what people see, the same things other Satanists do. Period. Truth. Point. Truth. Bam. And that's the truth. And that's the whole truth of this world. You need to know anything else about the world, just that, then you know everything there is to know about this world. If if all you know is what was said here today in this talk, you know everything there is to know about everything. <laughs> You're a know-it-all. Seriously, you look at the news, you'll start to see prophets of Baal, you know, uh, the way of the Lord being um, shat upon and the cheering on their own destruction and telling everyone everything's good. You know, everyone give, making everyone zoom everybody else to feel good, feel good, feels good, do it. Yeah, feels good, whatever it is, you know, get rid of God. Yeah, you know, you'll see it's the same exact thing. Now, geopolitically, let's turn to California. I am so loving this. I, I have to say, that except for the fact I got friends there, which is grieves me. I just want them to move to Texas, you know, and I think maybe I'm going to move to Texas too because... Gosh, you know, I don't want to move, but, uh, you know, I, I, at this point, I'm, my feeling is, uh, you know, it's coming down to uh, we're in a death spiral state here in New Mexico, and Texas is like an economy unto itself. And I'm just thinking, um, you know, there's friends I have in Texas. If I get my friends to move from the West Coast, then they would be in Texas. Got other friends I know of that moved there, you know, uh, recently from California to get out of exactly what's happened. They saw what was coming. Well, here's the thing, okay? And, 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 and again, if, you know, as far as my friends are concerned, I'm, I'm not laughing at you, okay? So don't, don't think I'm laughing, but shh, seriously. <clears throat> no, I'm not laughing at them. I'm <clears throat> what I'm saying is, and what's important here is, 
they just reported last night that the, the budget office reported they have a shortfall of about a, bill, a billion dollars. Sorry, I got a... <clears throat> I got a dust in my throat or something. They're reporting a billion dollar shortfall and listen to what they said. Because millionaires and billionaires are moving out of California and they took the revenue with them. Uh... Can I have a, a I told you so.com moment, please? Did I not say this very thing? And did that not confirm a million times? Uh, well, of course we said that was going to happen. And so they're going to be in food lines because <coughs> the job creators, the people that actually, <coughs> I'm, I guess I'm making a point. Trish? Yeah. We said... <clears throat> oh, thank you. That's a very little one there. I need more. <clears throat> God, that's weird. It's in the top of my throat. Um, just the most bizarre uh, thing. Um, Try to get me to stop, and I'm not going to stop. I guess this is a sore point with old Satan. Anyway, and the wires. Here's the thing. I told you so. dot com. Didn't I say it was going to happen? They all. And this is nothing. Every major employer is leaving California because none of the executives or the workers that work in these corporations want to stay there. All the mom and pops are selling their businesses, are moving them because they. They, um, you know, making a mom and pop makes, say they make $250,000 or $300,000 a year. When they get done paying for the building, the maintenance, the materials, the employees and the health care, they have no profit for themselves. So they might have grossed that money, but they can't afford the taxes. They just literally don't have the taxes at the end of meeting the payroll. So they're moving and selling their, you know, $700,000 house or whatever, and they're moving. They're all moving and leaving California with what I predicted. It's just going to be those people who voted all that in, in food lines. They're not going to have food stamps, unemployment, nothing. Zero zilch nada. It's on. It's going to happen. But that's going to be the pattern for the rest of the nation. They're, if you want... Revenue, money, security, and all that. You have to, you know, there's a, there's a free market principles you have to apply. You have to make it attractive to business, and that creates jobs, and those people go out and buy stuff, and then more taxes come into the coffers of the federal government. Very simple, right? You, you agree with me? How could you not? It's completely logical. If you tax everyone who isn't doing so well anyway who can barely make ends meet and then tell them to do the healthcare thing, they will flee or close their businesses, leaving nothing by the time 2014 comes around. So don't get me wrong when I talk about time going out on and on, that there isn't this Armageddon that's coming. You know, just as there was World War II, there will be a World War III, and it's going to be World War III, as my friend very astutely says, World War III is right now. It's this election. It's these people. It's these people cheering on their own destruction. They are as Sodom and Gomorrah with the same result, which will be complete failure because the prophets of Baal are prophesying unto them, you're all doing the right thing. And they actually believe it. I'm watching the sun coming up. It is beautiful this morning. We haven't had rain here. We've had no snow. The ski areas are all closed. It's a complete emergency. Um, I think, you know, God knows why. Uh, maybe... Um, the weather people, uh, the weather modifiers want to drive us all out of New Mexico. I'm like, fine, go into Texas. <laughs> no problem. Heading down to San Antonio or Austin. Yep, no problem. Not a problem at all, you know. In fact, <laughs> it'd be nice to be able to run into people to have a conversation with because I know quite a few people there that are right up with the Lord. They're on the same path. 
you know, and they, and they don't shun this message of, of hope for people to turn away from the prophets of Baal and realize that, you know, the Lord calls us as individuals, not as collectives, not as members of this group or that group, but he calls us out of these groups. You know, so if you're in a Babylon um, church system, it's just a false group. It's not church. It doesn't mean Jesus sanctioned it. And he'll call you out. A lot of people liken the, the, the message in, in, in Revelation 18 to being called, you know, step out from among them and be separate, you know, as being, being called out of the church system, being called away from the prophets of Baal, the prophets of lies, to the prophets of truth. In other words, to the oracles of God, to the, to the meaning of Rima, to the meaning of actual true prophecy, which true prophecy is like this. You're doing wrong. It's Jeremiah on steroids. Jeremiah is true prophecy on steroids. You're doing wrong. You repent from your evil ways and turn back to the Lord. That's the prophet's job. That's it. And that's the whole point. If they're doing the opposite of that, then obviously, I mean, they don't have to say they're prophets. You know, they can be in the pastors. They can be uh, co-saints, other people praying with you in your prayer group. You know, it let's not confuse when I say prophets. I don't mean people that have an official title called prophet, unless it's P-R-O-F-I-T. But I don't, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying anybody operating in the gift of prophecy, saying, the Lord thus saith the Lord, he told me just now when I was praying, you're on the right track. Oh, I had a lot of people doing that to me. They weren't prophets officially. They were just people in the church. They were playing their part, playing with the team to try to get me manipulated and mind controlled. And I don't have any, um, contrary to popular belief apparently with some people think I have some kind of an ax to grind with them. I don't, I don't care about them in the sense that I don't feel I need to go pick at their building. I don't feel I need to, you know, I, I, if you ask me about a certain guy certain person by name, or I know a famous figure by name, I'll name them, but I don't want you to think they're any more unique than anyone else. They're the same as the rest of them. They're all, like I told you, these people in these church systems, they can be interchanged. They wear the same dockers. They have the same little goatees. You can, they have the same kind of bopping up and down enthusiasm that most people think is hokey and stupid. You can stick them in any kind of place you want and interchange them at will. And they're just like little, um, dolls that you that kids play with or little uh uh figurines you know that you place in a little um you place on that kids play with you can just interchange them they're all in it's all modular and interchangeable you should buy some and 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 get some for your uh you know for the next birthday party and you can you can dress them up and put them on a stage and you can have them do mock church i'm just kidding i'm just you know just showing you when you encounter that sort of thing of the hive mind control, where they all look and act and talk the same, you know there's, and they're all, they're all the false prophet, right? And they're going to give cover to the president. Already we have the false pre- prophet and the, the, the 666 beast in every generation, don't we, in that sense, of, right, giving power unto the beast, the power of the supernatural. What would it be? It'd be the church, giving the power of the supernatural. You could say it's Islam, giving the power to the, uh, the Mahdi to come. That would be the same structure. See, the Bible is very multifaceted. And the truth supply to everyone, every time, and all over at the same moment, every minute of every day, everywhere. And I know that's hard to see. But that's why we read the Old Testament. I'm not in, I know Jeremiah is confronting them in that day about what they did. It's not for me right now. But it is, and it's for them in 1945 and them in 2085. Anyway, time is not a literal thing in the kingdom of God, and so therefore it doesn't really exist. So whatever we're going through is sort of an artificial, manufactured reality for the purpose of God's ultimate will in making his church, his new Jerusalem, his final work, whatever it is he's doing. Um, it's a process and it goes on and goes on. And 
at the same time I'm watching this beautiful sunrise, not a cloud in the sky. All my plants want water, though. Um, it's going to be a warm day. Yesterday, even though it's cold, I have a certain place I can go to get sun. And even though it's cold, like, you know, it might have been, you know, I was in the 50s, I guess. It wasn't that cold. But, I mean, you can get, you, you know, that's still cold for some people. You get up against the building, a certain area, and it's just sun with no wind, no nothing, and it's warm. It's like it, you sweat, even though it's only, you know, it could be 40 out, and you could still get sun. And so it looks like another day today. We've, and to wit, we've had, when it's December 8th already, we have had no winter, no fall, no harsh weather going on. I mean, if it keeps going like this, we're talking, well, I guess it's global warming. We should go get together with Al Gore right away and uh, sign on. The, the, the halls of power that I've seen in the world, I've seen the elite New World Order top people. And all of them were Luciferians, which is what you already knew. But I knew this personally. So uh, who have no toleration for dissent whatsoever, which is why you all, you know, conform so easily because you feel the pressure of that mandate. But that's what their God tells them to do. And therefore, most people on the earth... Um, will not be in possession of their souls, and upon death they will go into the tunnel of white light and they will give it up. And God knows what will happen to them. But it doesn't end on death. It keeps going. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of other aspects to this that you can only access after death. So in a sense, this whole thing we're going through is a preparation to die, which is the real rapture, and, um, or, or it's hell. If you go into the tunnel of white light, what you know is you've gone to hell. You've, you're, you rejected God. You stayed in your situation. If you're in the tunnel of... Let me tell you this to the heathen, because there may be a way out for you. If, you know, I am kind of a lawyer in the spirit. If you are in the tunnel of white light, it means... What that means is you failed, Okay. But all hope is not lost. If you know that much, when you remember what I said, reject all your friends and loved ones and run out the other way and fall on your face to the Lord and beg him at that moment to take you, please. And I, he probably will. Do not go into that tunnel. Go the other way. See, they can't force you to do anything. It has to be free will. So they're using that. So use your free will to reject it. Realize that your parents and your ex, your wife that died and your, and your dogs or whatever you're seeing there, it's a projection of your own mind. It's not real. Run the other way and, you know, toward your own death and scream for the Lord to, to take you and say you're sorry, please, that you've screwed up and you realize it now and go on with him to eternity. And, and let's, you know, and ask the Lord, this is what I would ask him, Please, Lord, let me never revert to those ways again that I did. I'm so sorry. I've, thank you for taking me. I hope we never have to go back to that again. And maybe you won't. But um, a lot of people think that tunnel of white light is the, um, is the birth canal of reincarnation. So I might as well tell you that before you hear it from someone else. The, re, the, the birth canal for reincarnation. In other words, you go through that white light and you get you know, funneled into another womb. Um, in other words, you didn't make it. So you're back here again for the umpteen millionth time. That's a very unreliable science. Here's what I can say. The tunnel of white light with all your friends is run by the, quote, aliens, you know, the little gray aliens. They run it. All the souls go through that thing because they have it there. But these are souls that aren't going with the Lord. I know that sounds like wild fiction. It sounds like sci-fi. But, you know, I think there's something to that. And so, fair warning for those of you who will be dying. Um, if, you, if you wind up in that thing, it doesn't mean you're a total failure. It just means, you know, this is a huge deception. They want you to run through that tunnel. That's why they put all those props in front of you. Your, you know, your loved ones, your, the one people you miss, the people you want to be with. You don't ever want to leave that tunnel of white light. You want to go in there forever and ever. Run the other way and fall on your face before God. And I think you're going to get out of it. That's me giving you the best advice I can give you as your advocate for now. 
Jesus is the only real advocate, and I'm about done here. There was more I wanted to talk about besides the California confirmation of, um, shoot, you know, well, it said 800 and some odd billion is, is, is missing from the coffers. They raised taxes with Proposition 30 to, to, to 13.3% for state tax. And they're raising taxes across the board. Jerry Brown, the governor, became the most popular governor after raising the taxes, but they're only polling the people that were voting in favor of that. What they didn't figure on is all the jobs and people of means leaving all at once. <laughs> and that means that next year, the next time they measure the budget, it's going to be $2 billion, and then 3 and then 4 and then 10 and then bankruptcy. And um, on that day, they're going to need tanks in the streets, riot patrol. They're, need, they're going to have to fence in California, fence in the city so people can't leave uh, because people in other states won't want the refugees. And, um, you know, they won't want people escaping with their wealth either. So they've got to figure a way to keep people there so they can tax them. And the whole thing could have been remedied by just spurring business on. You're going to see Apple Computer leave and people like that. You're going to see Silicon Valley just disappear. They won't say anything. In fact, they may even say, well, yeah, we're going to keep voting for Jerry Brown and the Democrats while they quietly exit. That's another thing. They're like big supporters of Obama and the Democrats, just like Wall Street is, while they quietly exit. <laughs> Leaving the people there, the poor people, holding the bag and being poorer than ever before because socialism, which is what Jerry Brown's instituting, communism leads to the poor getting poorer, the miserable getting more miserable. Les Miserables uh, on steroids, complete total meltdown to where the government can't even, they have to even ask for a loan from the federal government just to provide assistance to people because they won't have it in their tax base. And um, predicted here, and I predict the rest of it to go the same way until these people learn a very valuable lesson about money and uh, prosperity. Um, even the communists in China have turned to capitalism. It's not capitalism. It's basically basic business. I provide a product or service for you that you need. You pay me a fair price for it. I go out and buy something from somebody else for my family and the economy and wealth is created and grows. It's a very, very simple concept that comes from God. You know, the, the, the opposite, socialism, communism, all do not come from God. It comes from the devil. It's there as a ruse to get people to vote for it because they think they're going to get free candy. And basically what ends up being is they get lured in. Like when the candy man comes, he lures you in, and then he assaults you, right? That's exactly what happens. Over and over, the dumb people keep falling for it. The poor get poorer. The dumber get dumber. And uh, eventually then the whole thing implodes due to, um, I guess, the great unwashed. You know, the funniest thing about it all is that all these people that voted for Obama because they thought they'd get freebies um, will be the first to go into the biggest poverty. It would have been the opposite had they gone the opposite way. But they were too brainwashed, is it? Well, I don't know what convinced them because, you see, the little people, you know, the secretaries, the janitors, the maids, the... Uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, the mechanics, the people that make the society work, they don't get paid unless there's people to, that will buy those services. You know, um, the only people that buy, have made service are, are you know, fairly well-to-do people. The only people that get their cars worked on are fairly well-to-do people. The only people that hire painters and contractors and uh, uh, people to work on their Ferraris and things like that are well-to-do people. The, the people that have businesses have to be fairly well-to-do people and make a profit or they'd be out of business. And they hire people. And if they make more of a profit and they get taxed less, they hire more people. Those people go out to Walmart. They buy lots of stuff. Walmart pays taxes. The economy goes up and uh, everybody is happy. Um, you know, at least they, they're, 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 they're not under poverty. I think the poverty, though, will be good for the USA. I think the taxes, in a way, are good in the sense that it's bringing pe it will bring the economy to failure, which, you know, uh, it will bring um, people to their knees. The human misery quotient will be up by a thousand percent. And in that 
time, they're going to reach for God. They're going to reach for a solution. They're going to realize they're too feeble and too stupid to figure it out for themselves. So they're going to have to hearken unto the Lord. You know, you know what? You can't get too. You can't be too upset with them. Um, I'll say feeble. I won't say stupid. No one's born really stupid. It's just, it's a, it's a decision thing that makes you stupid. Uh, prosperity comes when people take risks, and those risks turn out to be something the marketplace wants, and those people have to expand their businesses to provide that good or service to the economy, to the, to the, to the nation, or to the, uh, to the world, and then they hire employees, and those employees get paid, and then they go out and buy more stuff. So wealth, that's, how wealth is created. When you put socialism together, it takes the wealth away from everyone, drives away business, and eventually you're left with nobody else's money to give out to anyone else. The food stamps stop, the benefits stop, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, Social Security, it all stops because they go insolvent because they run out of other people's money and they never provided for business to thrive so that more tax base could come in as revenues. Without businesses thriving, there could be no socialism, but it only lasts until those businesses are gutted and then it ends for everybody, everywhere. It's tyranny, it's a totalitarian state, it's, um, you know, the thing implodes, the government turns on its own people, and then they start cannibalizing themselves. And that's been the, the sad state of human history from the beginning of time. And America was supposed to be at end of it, but the seeds of corruption of America were also sown in the beginning, and it looks like the corruption has eclipsed the good at this point. God help us all. I'll see you next time.